With the NBA season right around the corner and generationally gifted prospects starting to play against each other, I thought it would be a good time to jumpstart our NBA draft coverage by assembling my first mock draft of the 2023 cycle. Headlined by Victor Wembanyama and Scoot Henderson, the 2023 class features a deep, diverse, and promising group of players who are sure to excite fan bases around the league for years to come. Now, as it is only October, I'll only be taking a look at the lottery-level prospects, otherwise known as the top 14, for this initial mock draft. And in doing so, I'll try to establish a baseline for further draft evaluation as the cycle moves forward. As a disclaimer, the order of this mock draft was determined by Vegas win totals, and for this exercise, I'm assuming all NBA franchises are operating under the best player available principle. With the first overall pick, I'm taking Victor Wembanyama. The Spurs traded DeJounte Murray this offseason, and Victor Wembanyama is thought to be a significant reason as to why. The 7'4 Frenchman recently wowed NBA scouts in Las Vegas as his Metropolitan's 92 squad took on G League Ignite in a pair of exhibition games this past week. Wembanyama is every bit of a generational prospect as advertised. His staggering offensive fluidity for his size is legitimately something the game has not seen before. He can shoot off movement with ease, he can put the ball on the floor, and he finishes with grace around the rim. His three-level scoring acumen combined with his game-altering rim protection and switchability on the defensive end sets Wembanyama up to be the cause of the biggest tank in league history. He needs to get stronger and play more physical, but these are only minor qualms with an otherwise amazing prospect. Victor Wembanyama goes first overall. At two, the Houston Rockets take Scoot Henderson. The other star of the exhibition games in Nevada, Henderson is a G League Ignite prospect who projects best as a lead guard in the mold of Derrick Rose or Damian Miller. Scoot's dazzling athleticism has only been accentuated by his recent strength gains. In his early performances of his second year with the G League Ignite program, Scoot's shown so much more confidence as a shooter and playmaker and looks to have a leader's mentality on the floor. Defensively, Scoot is active and harasses opposing ball handlers, and has also done a good job of timing his gambles when reaching or digging down. Even though he's only 6'3", Scoot's performances in the G League alleviate any concerns I have about his size when drafting him this high, and he's worthy of the number 2 selection here. At 3, I have the Pacers taking Nick Smith Jr. In what many see as a two-player draft, I believe Nick Smith is the most likely player to break into that top tier of players over the course of the season. The Arkansas freshman has a long and wiry frame for a combo guard, and he has a great 3-level scoring package. During his high school career in Arkansas, he also showed growth as a playmaker for others, making him a legitimate on-ball threat in all aspects of the game. He's intense and disruptive on defense for his size, and he should be the focal point of an Arkansas team loaded with NBA draft prospects. If you want to learn more about Nick Smith and his teammates, check out this video. The Thunder seemingly have a billion first round picks, which in theory could be used to trade up to number one, but given how good Wembanyama has looked thus far, I don't think any team would be willing to trade that pick. Not even. For all of King Midas' is silver. The Thunder take Baylor's Keontae George here. Spending his senior season at IMG Academy, George blossomed over the second half of the season as an athletic off-ball scorer with a penchant for hitting big shots. Another sturdy combo guard, George has a great knack for contorting his body to finish around and through defenders. While he isn't always on, per se, he still showcases the scoring talent to warrant being a top 5 selection in this year's draft. I see him as a Bradley Beal type in the NBA. At 5, I have a newly rebuilding Utah taking overtime elites Amen Thompson. The 6'7 guard is a long rangey athlete with great passing instincts. Given his size and skill with the ball, Amen's value lies in his versatility. Having grown up a point guard, it's easy to see him running offense in the NBA as he is great at leveraging his physical gifts to create passing angles for teammates. He's also comfortable on the defensive end where he uses his length to disrupt ball handlers and drivers. While he needs to improve as a shooter, that really seems to be the only area of concern for Thompson moving forward, while his strengths still make him a top 5 pick. At 6, I have the Magic taking center Derek Lively out of Duke. The number one player in the high school class of 2022, Lively projects more as a rim running 5 offensively in the NBA. Where his value primarily shines though is on the defensive end, where he's a rangy 7 footer who is light on his feet and possesses great shot blocking instincts. Lively has shown that he can guard in space and contain smaller players, which only adds to his NBA appeal. While he is perhaps slightly more limited offensively than you'd want a typical top 10 prospect to be, Lively's defense will provide enough to make any NBA team happy with his selection, and any other offensive skill enhancement is merely a bonus to an already exciting prospect. He reminds me of a slightly less skilled version of Evan Mobley. At 7, I have Detroit taking Lively's teammate, Derek Whitehead. Whitehead played his high school ball at Montverde and showcased a professional level scoring package that continued to improve every year. 
He has great footwork and fluidity, and he's a better athlete than what his film would suggest, as he's often a little bit too passive and settles for too many outside shots. Still, Whitehead has good size for a wing at 6'6", and plays with the instincts of an NBA veteran on both ends. He doesn't get sped up with the ball and always seems to know where to be on the floor. For a team that values scoring and awareness, Whitehead would be a great fit. At 8, I have Amon's twin brother Asar Thompson going to the Sacramento Kings. Built very similarly to his identical twin brother, Asar plays more true to his size than Amon. At 6'7", Asar is a great athlete who thrives on the wing where he can attack closeouts off the catch and finish at the rim with a variety of moves. He's a quick twitch defender as well who can disrupt plays with his length and stay in front of perimeter players. Asar's shooting remains to be a concern as he's yet to find a reliable stroke from deep but his twitchy athleticism and all-around impact makes him a top 10 prospect heading into the season. At 9, I have the Wizards taking Houston forward Jarris Walker. Walker's strong and wide frame allows him to carve out space on the block, but where he really catches eyes is with his passing and skill. Walker is capable of running ball screens as a handler, as he showed at IMG Academy, and he loves grabbing rebounds and then leading fast breaks. He's an intense defender who really improved his mobility during this past season, and he should be able to get consistent minutes for a Houston Cougars program that emphasizes toughness, rebounding, and aggression. Walker's unique grace for his size makes him a fun prospect to monitor, and I see him as a more confident and skilled Patrick Williams in the NBA. I have Brandon Miller going 10th here to Charlotte, as the Alabama freshman boasts a rare fluidity with his 6'8 frame. Miller has good touch around the basket, and while he's still working on his outside shot, I buy his movement skills and ranginess in the NBA. He's a great ball handler who creates loads of space thanks to his length, and he can get into pull-ups with ease. He has good passing vision, but is more of a wing than a supersized point guard. Still, his potential offensive skill package, although not consistent enough yet, makes him a top 10 prospect for me. I think he thrives at Alabama as someone who should be comfortable playing in a fast-paced system with a bunch of offensive possessions. The Knicks grab Kentucky combo guard Kaysen Wallace at 11. Wallace spent his high school years at Richardson High School in Texas, where he was the star player of one of the best teams in the entire state his senior year. He has great acceleration and always plays at 100 miles an hour. He's quick to get into pull-up jumpers and uses hesitation dribbles well to get to the rim. He loves to get out in transition and finish at the rim, but he's also a knockdown shooter with a versatile and repeatable release. Additionally, he's one of the class's best perimeter defenders as he's engaged defensively and has a tendency to make game-breaking plays off the ball thanks to his instincts. He reminds me of a sturdier and more reliable version of Kobe White offensively as someone who can come in and score buckets in a hurry. At 12, the Trailblazers take Villanova freshman Cam Whitmore. Whitmore is a unique basketball player because he seems to be just as comfortable posting up players on the block as he is hitting dribble combo moves and knocking down jumpers. Despite only being 6'5", Whitmore plays with a power and physicality rarely seen at the high school and soon-to-be college level. He's known as perhaps the best dunker among incoming freshmen, as his vertical athleticism combined with his lower leg strength makes for some amazing highlights. Defensively, Whitmore can guard players bigger than him due to his strength and sturdiness, and he can also stay in front of smaller players as well. He reminds me of a more skilled Isaac Okoro. At 13, give me Arkansas's Jordan Walsh. Another member of the Razorbacks' top two recruiting class, Walsh is a 6'7 wing who defends and plays with legit fire. Offensively, he's best suited off the ball, even though he played more of a feature role during his past season at Link Academy. Most people in the draft community think his shot is a question mark, but I see a smooth release with sound mechanics, so I'm not worried about his shot at all moving forward. He does need to become a better decision maker in order to be a full-fledged offensive weapon, but his defensive versatility and shooting in a league that values both of those skills immensely makes him a lottery pick in 2023. Rounding out the lottery, the Pelicans, who by the way won't be here by season's end because this team is a wagon and they should make the playoffs easily, take Anthony Black out of... You guessed it. Arkansas. Black is a 6'7 point guard who has tremendous vision and feel as a passer. He can hit full court transition passes while also being able to read ball screens at an advanced level. I have my worries about him as a scorer and finisher through contact, but his passing and defensive versatility keep him on the floor in the NBA. He's also a capable shooter with good touch, so it's not like the cupboard is totally bare for him as a scoring guard either. Black's unique skill set, given his size, makes him the final selection in this first mock draft. That rounds out my first official 2023 mock draft. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because I promise there will be much more awesome NBA draft and college basketball content as hoop season gets into full swing. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.